Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Ferguson and I have a medical practice in Powellsville, North Carolina. Today we're going to talk about Alzheimer's disease. Before we talk about Alzheimer's disease, we need to first get some framework down. Now, dementia is the big term. You'll hear family members saying, my husband, my friend, my partner's got Alzheimer's disease, got dementia, has got part-timers, got senile dementia. All of those terminology are many times referring to Alzheimer's disease. Now, if we had an umbrella, underneath the umbrella, 65% of that would be Alzheimer's disease. Another percentage would be Parkinson's disease, Huntington's chorea, multi-infarct dementia. So there's different components that would fall under there. But today we're going to emphasize Alzheimer's disease. Now, if you were 65 years of age, you would have a 3 to 5% chance of having Alzheimer's disease. That would be the prevalence in the United States. At age 75, it's six, it would be 15 to 20%. At age 85, it's 40 to 50%. So you can see that this is a very big deal in the United States, and I personally don't think it gets enough emphasis placed on it. Now, when we talk about Alzheimer's disease, one of the biggest challenges is the caretaker. Who's going to take care of the family member that has Alzheimer's disease? Is it going to be the sister, the mother, the brother, the husband, the wife? And this is where the challenge begins. So often in my office, I have patients coming in my office that are just totally frustrated because they're taking care of a loved one at home and no one else is helping. They don't understand the process and it's just a ball of confusion. So I'm going to try to help alleviate a little bit of that confusion today as we talk about this disease process that is so prevalent in the United States. Now, first of all, Alzheimer's disease is a disease that we really can only diagnose at the time of our autopsy. That's when the person has died and you dissect their brain and you'll see neurofibrillary tangles and you'll also see some other characteristic things. But let's not get off into the real technical part of that, but let's get back into the more practical part that you're going to see. When a person is first starting to come down with things like Alzheimer's disease, and it could be a younger age as well. I think the youngest person we know of with Alzheimer's disease is about 38 years old. Now, Alzheimer's disease is a German name, that's why maybe it sounds a little funny. So it's Alzheimer's as opposed to Alzheimer's, which is many times what people say. Now, when you begin to develop this, it starts off, many times it's referred to in three stages. Some people have five, seven stages, some people have five stages. But I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible and as practical as possible, where it's right where you live and it's right where the things you're experiencing on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis. So let's think about this for a minute. You have a loved one, they're 75 years old, you live out of town, you call them, you check on them, you say, hi mom, how you doing? And my mom says, oh, I'm doing fine. What you have for you today, mom? Well, I had this, I had that. Well, mom may have a routine down and she just tells you that. It may not be actually what she's doing, she may be having other challenges. Maybe she's no longer paying her bills like she should. Maybe she's double paying bills. Maybe she's using all the money out of the checking account. And this is where the caretaker and the family members have to come into paying a little more attention. You have to get a little more detailed on what a person actually did. When they say they had breakfast, ask them what exactly they had. You know, how long did they cook it? What did they do? Did they do something different than what they normally do? You want to get into more details because that's the way you'll be able to decide whether or not the family member is really telling you the truth. Because early on, many times dementia is hidden quite well. And the smarter a person starts out, the better they're able to hide it. For example, I had a friend of mine who I know he was at the genius level. And every time I saw him, he was talking about how the microwaves went through the air and bounced off the wall and real high level educated stuff that I really didn't understand. And what happened, I could see he was coming down with Alzheimer's disease, but he wasn't my patient. I mentioned it to the family, maybe they should get him checked out and they really didn't. And it was about five years before the average person could notice it. Because what happens when you start out as smart as he is, by the time he's having trouble balancing his checkbook, he's way, way down the line. So let's talk about some subtleties. When a person's first starting to come down with Alzheimer's disease, they'll become a little forgetful. Now anybody can be forgetful, but it becomes out of their pattern. Say you've got a mother that always knew where her keys were. And now three times this past month, she was looking for her keys. Say you've got a mother or a father who their house is always just perfectly in order. 
Now you go by and maybe things are a little out of order, maybe not as neat as they used to be. Or maybe you've got a mom who used to dress really sharp. Now you go by and she's dressed nicely, but maybe her shoes don't match her dress as well as it used to, or maybe her lipstick is slightly crooked, things like that. Maybe her eyes aren't done as well as they used to be. Just very, very subtle things might be the beginning of this disease process. And when you notice these things, it's important that you get them evaluated by a healthcare provider that knows something about the topic. And that's very important. I emphasize that know something about the topic. Everybody kind of knows that Alzheimer's disease exists, but not a lot of people deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis and can evaluate it, can assess it, and can really help you along the way as you deal with your loved one. So let's get back to that loved one that's starting to show a few little signs and things that may not be their normal. What other things that may happen, say they used to just match immaculately and now maybe they got Mitch Mac socks on. Um, no big deal to have on Mitch Mac socks, but if, if it's out of their pattern, now it is a big deal. So really the thing you're watching for initially is things that are out of your loved one's pattern. And that could be anything. Say they really love to take photography. Say they like to take photographs. I really enjoy photographs. But in, in my family would know that if I stop liking to take photographs, something was wrong. And this is one of the things, this is a change. This would be a change in my personality. I may still be doing fine, carry on fine conversations, but I might say, I really don't want to go take any pictures today. Well, that's different for me. Now, maybe I, one day I'm not feeling well. But say I do that three or four times over a period of a week, two weeks, or even a month. Now, that's an issue. And many times when a person is first coming down with dementia, they actually know that their memory is not as sharp as it was. And they know that they're kind of forgetting things or missing things. This is the time to get checked out. What I find in my practice is that the earlier I check someone out, the more likely we are to start treating them early. The earlier we treat them, the more success we have. The data on treating early is not so good. So if you start treating early, what I'm presently finding in my personal medical practice is that I do a screen in my office, it's a computer screen. And what happens is the person is evaluated from zero to 10. Zero meaning normal, 10 meaning dementia, at least to the moderate stage. And what I find is my patients, if I evaluate them and they score, say, a two or three, well, I start that patient on medication. And I've gotten several of those people back to zero. And I think that's a pretty big deal. Because right now, we know that dementia, Alzheimer's disease, we can treat it, but there is no cure. And because there is no cure, we need to do the best we can to help our loved ones out and to help them lead the most successful life they can lead.